Now, Lord God, um, may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Again, welcome to the house and welcome to um, our Sunday adult Bible classes. And so glad you're here. Um, and I just want to, um, just by way of review, we've been, this will be the last lesson in the area of anthropology, the study of man. And we've been um, working our way through each topic of this. And we started and, um, a few weeks ago with, which is on page 32, the natural man. Our culture says that man is, and this is on page 32, our culture says that man is purely material, the product of mindless forces. That would be right under where it says truth one, natural man. And then um, after that, we talked about truth two, the supernatural man. The Bible teaches that man consists of both body and spirit and is created in the image of God. And uh, um, 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 by apartheid, that's the, that's the one where they, the theologians look at it as just um, body and spirit. But those who, of us who embrace a tripartite, which is three parts, body, soul, and spirit. And, and so we, we talked that, and, and then we, we talked about the last, we talked about finding yourself, truth three, which says, um, the world says that man is naturally good. So evil must derive from the social institutions that stop him from doing what he wants. And as we did that study, we discovered that the culture is, um, when he said man is basically good, that was a teaching. Anybody remember who, who taught that? There was a, a psychologist who taught that man is basically good. And if you need, need help with that, you can look on page 30, 36. Nope, 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 nope. Dalrymple here, he, he was, a, he was a, a medical doctor, but if we looked at page, huh? nope, Maslow, Ma Maslow, no, now I want you to look at it, see who can get it, Carl Rogers, it has to be Carl Rogers, right, so, Carl, now, so see how this premise was set up, good morning, good morning, good morning, and see how this false premise was set up that Carl Rogers and others taught that man is basically good. And if there's any evil, any bad, it comes from outside, but it, it's not us. And, and, and it's, it's somewhere else. It's coming from the culture, not, not realizing that we make up the culture. <laughs> so so, we, so we, we, we saw how that was a false premise that man is basically good. Then we found out Abraham Maslow, he, 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 he took that a step further. He, 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 his, what he devised in his um, false teaching to us, he said that not only that, but he came up with this thing that was called the hierarchy of need. You may recall from the last time we was together that he, he, he stated that man um, has needs, and he, had, he set up a triangle, if you please, and he said man has a physical need, and that started at the bottom, and then it worked its way on up to this so you finally got up here, and it was something that was called S.A. Self-actualization. Now, now, what in the world is that? And that's the right answer. But what, if we were to break that down, what, and if we were to try to explain that to a, a small child or an older person, because, you know, when we get older, or when people get older, they can kind of revert back. But if you want to explain self-actualization, you say S-A and it means self-actualization. What does that mean? How do you break that thing down? Let me, let me make sure we got a... Um, Abraham Ma Maslow, mm -hmm. Maslow um, purported that man was basically good mm -hmm. and if institutions did not interfere with his, I want to say, development of the goodness in him. Mm -hmm. If there was no interference from social institutions, that this goodness in him mm -hmm. would develop. Would develop. It would develop and he would eventually or ultimately become all that this goodness 
contained in him. Mm. And it would actually or actualize or make itself, would manifest itself. Mm. And he would be all that this goodness uh, contained in him. Wow. Did you hear all that? Now, to add to that, and Sheila did a good, so Sheila did a good job, but to add to that, what he said, and this is on page, I, I want you to see it in your, if you, you got your study notes with you, and I mean, you got the study guide with you. On page 38, letter A, we'll sum it up. I'm sorry, 36, I got to get these glasses, oof. Um, 36, I'm sorry, 36, at the top, what it basically means is this, you tap into your inner desires to achieve your full potential. And what, what, what Sheila stated was, too, if you, if you let this goodness that's all up in us, that they taught, and, you, and you, you don't hold back any of your inhibitions, you just, whatever, I mean, all any urges that you have, just let them go all out. Because that's going to achieve of this triangle, you're going to reach your full potential. Then it was, um, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, wait a minute, because I want them to hear you in the back. Now, did you hear? So that means they talk, which is false now. You don't hold back anything. Any, any idea, any, and we, we studied a fellow um, in the Bible who tried this experiment. In the Old Testament, anybody remember who he was? Solomon. Solomon. Ma'am, ma I just want to make a uh, oh, from this? Okay. current um, example. Yes, go ahead. I remember when Michael Jackson was alive, mm. he actually had the money to, self, to, to truly self-actualize. Yes, he did. And um, at the time of his death, you heard <clears throat> many people who believed in this self-actualization. They may not have called it that, but they believed it. Mm -hmm. And they used the term or the verb morph. Oh, morph. Morphed. I remember that. Morphed, meaning changed. A constant change. Mm. And we know that when he was a child, how he was, and as he grew older, he began to dabble into drugs, and then he began the plastic surgery of the face, and then he just let a team of mm. plastic surgeons get a hold of mm. him and cut his face all up until he began to look very puppet-like. Yep. And then eventually he got to a place where he was saying that his skin, he had, um, what is it called when you lose your pigmentation? I can't remember the term. But eventually his whole body was white. Mm. And so his, uh, what is this, his music changed, you know, everything just changed. And two celebrities, he was the epitome, I would think, of self-actualization. Yes. Because he was praised, even, you know, when he died, uh, the, the deaf he died, mm. the, the um, doctor was supposed to keep touching him and waking him up because he had so, much drug, so many drugs in his system. And he went somewhere, and he stopped breathing, so he wasn't able to revitalize him. That's what the doctor was supposed to remain over him while he was asleep, that every time those drugs slowed his heart down, mm. he was supposed to arouse him so that his heart would re continue to beat. That's how deep he was into drugs. That he, It was almost like this doctor became an angel. He had to watch over him before he um, expired. Something happened, the doctor left the room. When he came back, Michael Jackson had expired. Well, but he, he, he died. He died. Oh, okay, when he, he died. expired, I wanna Ex make sure he died. He right? died, but I'm just saying, yeah, okay, right. when he, during the time of his funeral, he was praised for how he was morphed, how he morphed himself into be Number one, the number mm. one pop. I mean, he was it. He was it. Did did you did you, did everybody catch that? And but you, we can say now. There's a, a verse that we quoted, and and I'm a quoted, but I want you to tell me where it's found in the Bible. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. Now, what what book is it found in? Proverbs. Give me the address. 
Wait, wait, are you asking? I mean, that, man, I mean, does, does anybody out there know? But now, 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 did, he, he, now, he, he, did you know? Where, where's, I mean, does anybody in the house know where that's found at? Ah, ah. Now it's found two places. Prop, you saw just one. Now, where, where was the first one you found it? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, now, look at Proverbs 14, 12. Then I want somebody to look at 16, 1625. Ah, then you said 1624. Now, I almost got, I wanted, but look, but they would have said, that ain't right. That ain't right. That, 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 that's not, you got to be exact. You could have said the right thing. So now, you know what, now, you know what, why I like Jeopardy? If that's ever asked again, you will always know it. Right? You'll always know it. There is a way that it's sitting there. You know what? It seemed to be right to be this to be morphed. It seemed to be right. But it ended in death. Somebody put out a song years ago. Christian sister, I think it was um, Pat Boone's Debbie Boone. It was a wonderful song, but there was a phrase in there that that troubled me. You light up my life? Yeah, yeah. It can't be wrong when it feels so right. Yes, it can. <laughs> yes, it can. Right? You, you, the subtleness of it. And so we, we, we talked that a good while um, last time, and, and, and just this is just review. But now we're going to hit the subject, um, the last one in here, where we're talking about deny yourself. Because that goes counter to those who buy this false teaching here. You know, you, now, let, let, let me ask you, class, now. This is, everybody in this room would know this or should know this. But there had to be a bait for this. There had to be something that would appeal to the flesh. There had to be something that would draw you in um, that the flesh would love for this to have an audience. Now, 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 now I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you some letters and I'm going to need you to help me to figure out the three areas. And this is review. The three areas and be all in mind if I can just erase this so I can have a little room here. The three areas that this appeals to and it appeals to people who don't know Jesus and it worked then and it works now. And as pastor said, this one coach said, we're going to keep running the play until they figure it out. The devil knows that this play works. He has perfected it, and I don't care how smart you are, I don't care how young you are, it works if you don't know Jesus. The sad thing is, if you know Jesus, it might still concern you. These are the things that, th that these proponents of this, um, um, Abraham Maslow and, and Carl Rogers and others, because they buy into and I want to throw this out because I want to make sure you have it. They buy into what I consider the most dangerous religion. Anybody know what the most dangerous religion is? Humanism. humanism. Now, why would I say humanism? Why would I say humanism is the most dangerous religion? They used to call it secular humanism, but it, it's secular means like it's not sacred, but it's all it's all um, ungodly. So. Humanism, why would that be considered a very, very, very dangerous religion? Now, 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 now I know Sister Sheila is, look, she's going to, look, but I'm, I'm going to get on this side a little bit. Give, give, give the folk over here a chance. <laughs> now, humanism, first of all, what is humanism and why is it so dangerous? Self-religion. Um, Self-religion. Self -religion. Now, now, did you want to add to that? Well, they... Um, worshiping themselves, Ooh. they doing what they want to do. Ooh. There's no God in their life, Ooh. and um, but it is a God in their life. Themselves, themselves, a small G, small G. Yes. <laughs> do they have a savior? No savior. Themselves. 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 They the savior. That's why it's dangerous. Yes, very dangerous. Don't need nobody. I can do it myself. Yes. And um, and human. And, and so and all right, and all, all these right. psychologists who are ungodly buy into that. That we don't need God. God is only for weak people and ignorant people who don't know nobody. 
they, look, they don't know no better. So, so that's why they have to buy into this God that's made up. It's made up. It, he's not real. All you have to do is just um, try harder and, 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 and look, pull yourself up your, by your own bootstraps. You, you got it going on. And that's what they buy. The sad thing is, it's like a person who's, who's, who's gone up the ladder of success. They're going up the corporate ladder. And they go up there and, they, and look, they're working 15 hours a day. They don't see their wives. They don't see their children. They look. 15 hours a day, they're going, and they're going because they're trying to get up to the ladder, and they're trying to reach the, the corporate world. They're trying to go all the way up there, and then they get up there, and they discover that it's leaning around the, the wrong building. And so some of them get to the point that they take their lives because they found out the dream. And the dream, now, you hold on for a second. Now, so that being said, now watch this now. The things that appeal to the world Humanism is sunk in, so they don't see any need for God. Why repent? Why ask forgiveness of sin when you haven't did anything wrong? You got, you got your own system. And I'm basically good. Now, the things that really takes this to the top, though, is, is these here. They, they promise this. Let me see. And the, this one here and this. Wow. First one. Now you now you got to be a fan of Wheel of Fortune to get this one. If you if you don't if you don't know anything about Wheel of Fortune, this is you're not going to do well in this class. Well, no, well, now that's a good one, but that that has see. Oh, who said pleasure? She 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 got it. She got it. She got it. Ding 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 ding. No. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me spell it right. I'm good. A S U R E. I think I got it. Now, the F. Fun. Fun, but no, it's deeper than that. Flash, no, 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 no. No, I'm talking about when they sell it. They don't sell it as flesh. I'm talking about they, they, they trying to sell this. They're trying to put the, the look, they're trying to put the, um, the bait on the hook, and they want to draw, they want to appeal to the flesh so you can find, almost said it. Oh, what a class. I tell you, you guys are so sharp. I'm going to tell past about this. Now, but then the other one is happiness. Woo! Now, watch this. Watch this. Because you want to, you want to experience to the ultimate. Now, I hope this doesn't offend anybody. Please, I don't want to offend anybody. Um, they say when somebody's doing drugs, hardcore drugs, it's like an orgasm magnified pills to this. That's why they OD. They, they're trying to get that rush again. They're trying to say, oh, it's so wonderful. And so they keep going and keep going and keep going because they appeals to pleasure. Ah, but what about fulfillment? What does that look like? You can, you can be fulfilled. Oh, let me see if I can help. Because I, I, I now somebody, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Let me let, now who's got the mic? So it's about we gotta get the mic back, you know. You, now I just want you to know you represent your side pretty well. Did you want to say that? No, okay. You did a good job. Now if we can get this this side over here motivated a little bit, see if you can help them out. Now, now, now when, when we talk about fulfillment, what is that? We got pleasure down pretty good. But fulfillment. Wait, 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 wait a minute. A fulfilled means all that you desire is met. All your needs are met. So there's a feeling of contentment. You don't really desire anything it's else because you have false, anything. right? Yeah. Content. Or uh, Alexa said. Okay. Or or that word. I'm completely satisfied. Look. I got I got the seven Mercedes out front. Now I, I'm I'm letting y'all know I don't have this now because y'all say, well, I, oh, I didn't know Brother Larry had that. I'm just making an example. Now I got <laughs> I got the seven Mercedes out front. I got five houses all over the country. I got a woman in this state, and I got one over here, and I got one over here. And when I get bored, I can always act like a woman. 
for I, I, I'm just saying fulfillment. I've reached it. I, I, I've reached. I got it. Pleasure, fulfillment. All my dreams have been fulfilled. I got the dream house. I got everything. I got it all. But wait, 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 wait. But then, then it is happy. I, 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 then they said you can be really happy. Sister, sister um, Dorsey said, "No way." Let, let, can we can we get an editorial from you, Sister Dorsey? Would you like to elaborate on that? You got you got to help your side out. Your side is struggling a little bit. Your side struggling a little bit. All righty. Uh, <laughs> no, they're not happy because wow. if you don't have the Lord, you're always gonna want some more. Oh. You're always gonna want more. More. Always. More. always. If you don't have. If you don't, don't have the Lord. You can try to fill it with everything, uh -huh. right? Yes. And guess what happiness is? It's dependent on what's happening. Uh -huh. Right. In the short lived. Happy today, not happy the next moment. And and, and so short lived. And, and you said it. And if you don't have God in your life, you're like the, the cat chasing his tail. Getting dizzy. Ah. Now, 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 Sister Mar, you? Yeah, okay. Oh, my. You did a good job, too. <laughs> good morning, church. Good morning. But look at Solomon. Yes. All that he had, mm. the pleasure, the fulfillment he thought he had, the happiness he thought he had with all these different wives and all mm. this money and all his fortune, it was all in vanity. All in it was bad. sad, unfulfilled, unhappy. It was just sadness. Didn't have no pleasure in none of these things. He thought he had. Pleasure. He thought he had. He thought it, but he was empty. What was his empty conclusion At, when he tried all that? Because he had to, like Michael Jackson, he had, he had money to try all that. Oh Jesus! At the end of his life, he gave up some good counsel. I want you to turn to the book of Ecclesiastes. Whoever's got, yeah, I want. Uh, he gave us some good counsel. Hey, D, gave us some good counsel. Excuse, excuse. Gave us some good counsel. Thank you, Sister Mary. I want you to turn to the book of Ecclesiastes, and um, we, want, we want to see the conclusion of the matter. We, 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 we left him in his um, mess last time we, 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 we had a study, and we, we, we talked about him trying this and trying that. He tried everything under the sun but, um, and found it to be empty. But I, I want to, I wanna, um, it, was, it was empty, vanity, empty, futile. But look, look, look at what it says here. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, chapter 12, now, now, now listen, look at what it says in verse number one. Everybody there? I hope you're there. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number one. And he says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Before the dawn, he says, before the difficult days come. And the, and then the years draw near when you say, I have no, here it is, no pleasure in them. And then at the end of it, just drop down for time's sake, at the end of the chapter, listen to these wise words from someone who became, he had become a fool. But listen to what he says at the end. Let's hit verse 13. I need somebody to read that for me, 13 and 14. Who, who's, who's got that? Okay, okay, wait a minute. Let me, let me, let me, we got, we got, we got to get a brother here. I, I don't know if there's any brothers in the house. Uh, we get, wait, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me get him back here. I know we got some brothers. I'm just messing with y'all. Read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Woo! You know, hit, hit a matter, fear God, do what he told you to do. Now, now pass, pass the show, Ron. When, you, when you're talking about contentment, yes, please. Fulfillment. Philippians 4, mm. uh, 10, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now and at last your care for me has flourished again through Though you surely, surely did care, but you lacked opportunity, mm. not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Whew. 
I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My, my, my. And he's, as Paul, he, was, he learned mm -hmm. how to, you know, when things were good, he was content. That's right. Not so good, he was content <sighs> because he had the Lord. Because he had the Lord. Yeah. So it's just, and you know, sometimes you mentioned about working so many hours. Sometimes people work those long hours just to make ends meet. Right. And That's they true. don't necessarily work those long hours to get it. Oh, no, sometimes you have to. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, and that's the balance. Thank you, Pastor Ron. Because I know um, Pastor Ron, if I can say this, he, he has to work long hours because he's going to take care of his family. I'm talking about those who live on the job, really, so they, they're, not, they're not concerned about taking care of anybody but self. <laughs> right? Wait, 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 what, what I need, Sister Ines did like this. Just want more. They asked Rockefeller one day, how much was enough? What do you think he said? He said, a little more. Because there can, for real, for real, those who don't know the Lord can never truly be content. You can never say, look, now, and there's a, a level of contentment. I thank you, Pastor Ron. There's a level of contentment that we can have, but the, the truth of the matter is there's a tension there. Because we can be content in our relationship with the Lord, but then he says, but I want you to press on. You know, I want, I want you to press on. We should always be students of the word. We should always be learning and growing and picking up new skills because God has made us for that. We should never, even if you have a PhD, you, you should never say, I've learned all I need to know. I can rest now. I heard this brother, Alex um, Begg, said this on the radio the other day, and, and he said, here's the mark of humility. One mark he said was this. Everything that I have is a gift from God. My mind, my money, my energy, my eyesight, everything we have is a gift from God. And if it's a gift from God, how dare we boast about it? Because he gave it to us. And then he said the second thing is this, that um, we only know a little. <laughs> You know, you never say, you know, I know everything. Only God knows everything, right? So we get to the point. So if we say that everything that I have is a gift from God, the children, the car, this building, <laughs> the pastor, everything we have is a gift from God. And you know what? Because he gave it, I have no right to say it's mine. See, that's what children do. That's a mark of immaturity. You know what children say? That's mine. That's like, give me, that's mine. No, give me, that's mine. No, you can't play with it. And sometimes, sometimes, we say, this is my ministry. God forbid for a pastor to say, this is my church. This is my church. These are my people. What? They're God's people. <laughs> it's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Now, 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 now sister, Sister Dorsey had her hand up. You, 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 did I capture it or you? Wait, no, no, no. We, we want everybody here. We want. Oh! Lord, help, Lord, help her. Lord, help her. <laughs> I was talking about that. I was, um, wanted to say that life is a lesson. You learn something every day. Oh! Life is a lesson if you, you learn, if, if you're a student. Yeah. If you're a student. It just keep, this, I mean, but no, what I'm saying is a student, a student is always learning. So spiritually, we should always be students, always learning, always learning. And you know what? Watch this. Can learn from other people. Ooh. Ooh. Did you hear that? So we can learn from one another. If you, if you got to, um, I'm going to share this, and I'm, I'm not going to burst Bill with this, but I'm going to say it, though. Brother Bill is real good with computer and, and, and taking pictures. I ain't good at that. And, 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 and I said, Bill, I need your help. Can you do this and can you do that? And he said, yeah, no problem. Now, I can act crazy if I want to and act like I know, I know how to do it. It would be a mess. And you know what they'll say? That looked like something Brother Larry did. Because I didn't, you know what I'm saying? And so we don't want Brother Larry's hand fingerprints on it at all. And that's why our gifts are so important. 
knowing how we're wired, knowing how God has gifted us. Oh, we can go to somebody and say, I heard you share that testimony the other day. And, so, and, and Sister Elnora is here from our outreach. And she, she promoted that, that, that movie, War Room. Mm -hmm. Oh, she said hi. It went through her family and, and it did this and it did this. I, I got so excited, I wanted to go and see it again. Yeah. <laughs> right? right? So look, where's, where's Mike? Uh, you, you got something, Sister. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, um, as seniors and older people. Now, you got to use the mic, man. Got to use the mic. Got to use the mic. As older people and some seniors, we feel to realize that the children of today are more equipped to um, deal with the computers and the phones and mm. this, that, and the third. But some of us are so full of ourselves Ooh. that we won't give them a chance. Ooh. You know, I know it many times I had to go to my granddaughter and say, can you show me how to do this? Mm. You know, we have to put our pride behind us and let these children do what they do best. And believe me, our brains do not function the way theirs, theirs do. So in reference to learning something every day, grab hold to a kid, mm. and that kid can get you through the, the technology of today. That's right. So you can understand. It, you know? Did you catch that? Isn't that so true? So, so that means children can teach us? You know, now, can I say this now? I, I, I hope this doesn't embarrass anybody. I don't have anybody in mind. If you can't text, shame on you. I'm sorry. We got these kids that know how to do like this. I'm, I'm sorry, right? If you don't know how to text. If we got these. But wait, wait. wait. Well, I don't care how many fingers you use, but you know, <laughs> but you know how to, you should be, when we got all these kids around here know how to text, yeah, it, with, the eyes, with the eyes closed, yeah. if, and you say, I don't know how to text, shame on you. <laughs> Go and get Kayla. Go and say, Kayla, show me how to text. Oh, right? It's, uh, uh, okay, now, I, I, I hope, uh-oh, 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 come on now. First, you got to know, know how to spell. <laughs> but it spells for you. Yeah. If you start and you, the words off, it'll it'll go. Zoop, zoop. Yeah. You gotta have an idea. Wait, wait. I'm a poor speller. Well, but it'll help you with that. I am too. It'll help you with that. Yeah. And y'all, y'all know God. Y'all know that I'm a poor speller. And so even if I don't have it, if I put it up on the board, somebody gonna say, "Brother Larry, I think that's spelled," and that's okay. That's a learning process. So we want, we want to be better. And so all that was reviewed. For those who missed last week, all that was reviewed. Now we're going to do the lesson for the day. Now that I've gotten your attention, now that you're ready. Y'all ready, right? How's that? How you doing? Now, now, now let's, I want you to turn with me to page number, and i got to look at this, page 34. Because we're completing this subject when we talk about anthropology. We want to finish this. And again, anthropology means what? Study of man. Okay, I'm, I'm, I need some. I want to give give me some feedback. So now, now that we now we're talking about this, deny yourself. This was on page 34. If you didn't get a study, now look. Anybody need a study guy? All right. Now, now, brother James, this is what we do. I've learned. How, I, I've I've been forced to do this now. You can borrow this one if you want it. It's ten dollars. Okay. If you don't want it, I'll be coming back to get my book. <laughs> right? You know, that's what happened. You know what? Now, I, I, I got to make sure I have one left now. Here, I got one. I can't get my only one away. Here we go. Here we go. Now, watch this. I don't want you to miss this. The Greek word, and I can't say the Greek word, but guess what it means? To say deny. When you talk about deny self, and, and let me just read what's under the caption where it says, on page 34, now, but James, I want you to get to page 34 with us. The last, um, truth four, um, truth number four says, deny yourself. As Christians, we experience an inner conflict, um, an inner conflict between our new nature and our old. Can I get a witness? Amen? Amen. Fallen nature that causes us to think and do wrong. And then I, I, I want to ask this question, because we say it a lot, but what does it mean? When it says, deny yourself, what does that look like? What did it mean in Jesus' day? Because the scripture says, he says, anybody that will come after me must deny themselves, 
take up their cross daily and follow me. What did he mean and what does it mean to us when you say deny yourself? Now let me, I got it. Let me, now everybody heard the question, right? Now let me let me get Sister Alnora back here. She's uh I know she's she's a student of the word and we, we want to hear something. What does this word deny mean? Oh, I just like to say praise the Lord to everybody. Praise the Lord. Now, um, when you say in deny, deny, that means stop mm. what's in you, because we're talking about self, the pleasures that you would like to do. Mm. In other words, when we come to Christ, yes. we can no longer sit back and say, well, I want to go and have sex because it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. That's something that you enjoy doing. So you have to stop. Because the Bible says no, unless you're married. Amen. Then if you feel like, oh, well, I want to go get drunk. Mm. That's a pleasure that you like. Anything that you really, really, really in love with or you really like that the Bible is against, you have to stop right then and there mm. and do what the Lord thus says. My Lord, I think she made that clear. I mean, you can, you can fill in any of that blank. It's not just the, the sex, right, and, and the drinking, the gossip, the lying, the stealing, all, all, all that stuff. But, you know, and, and so literally what the Greek word means is to say no. Watch this now. This is what Sister Elnor was getting to. Say no to yourself. If you start it, Stop. If you haven't started, don't go there. Now, I, I saw something here, and, I, and we, we read this last time. And, I, and I'm sorry, Sister Shield. Let me hear, because they want to hear you in the back. I think what the Bible wants us to do is to stop being full of self mm. and be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Because I can, I can say, I, I, I'm not going to do it today, and I'll just jump up before I know I done did it. But if I reckon, <clears throat> if I reckon my fallen nature, that, that part of me that was there before I received Jesus Christ, if, if I reckon that part of me as being dead, and invite God to fill me with his spirit. The spirit should already be in me, but give the spirit access to Control. my will as I declare or as I reckon or as I consider or as I count myself, my old self, as being dead. Then I let the power of God take over. And, and, and in my walk, not only have I seen him take over, but he will even guide your footsteps away from it. He will even, even put up a, a, a barrier to even keep you from it. When, once we mean business, he means business. He means business. He will keep you. Once you, once you reckon that thing dead and you say, Lord, Sink or swim. I remember Pastor Brown used to say, live or die, I'm going to serve you. And, and, and that's what we call a bulldog determination. The reason why I say bulldog is because, and you can even go to a pit bull. Once they lock their jaws on you, you can forget trying to open them up. It's down. And, and that's what we, that's the determination we have to deal with when we in this battle because that's what it is it's a battle and it will take you out of here it will take you out of here if you don't have a bulldog determination don't care what anybody say well my, my drinking partner partner's gonna let you go let me go let them go the bible says there's a way that seems right unto a man but the end thereof is the way of death if they want to check out here before their time let them go Wisdom tells us when we see the danger, the righteous man hides himself. That's right. But the Bible says the fool mm. 
You know that if you keep drinking, you keep smoking, you keep whore hopping, you, whatever you're doing, the end of that way is going to be the way of death. And if you want to keep on going, the Bible says that the foolish go on and are punished. And what it's saying is that the judgment of that particular sin is inherent in the mm. sin. Mm. So once you partake of the sin, you got the judgment. You got the consequence. Whatever the consequence is, when you partake of that sin, you got the consequence. It's there. It's there. Whether you be saved or unsaved, mm. sin is sin. And it's inherent. The consequence is fixed. God made it a part of the sin. So that's what we're dealing with. Woo. Woo. Amen. Amen. Now, now I, the, uh, the Spirit of God is really moving here. But someone did something that's not the wisest thing to do. And, and, and we have someone with a black Chevrolet Impala with their personal goods on this seat where it can be seen. And that's not making it easy for us to control a lot. They like, just like now, what's on, the, what's on the seat? It's a telephone and uh, your computer um, casings. So it's a black Chevy Impala. It, just a reminder, we're, we're, not, we're not in heaven yet. We're, we're down in the hood. That's asking for trouble. Uh, yes, we need to, and, and so we didn't want the, the flow of that. And, and so what, what Sheila was saying, and this is going to go to, in addition to what she said, and so what I've discovered in my own walk, and we'll go more into detail with this, I want you to turn to Colossians chapter 3. We talked about this, and, and I want, there's some more that I want us to pick up from this, and we can um, see what we can do with this, but I want you to turn to Colossians chapter 3. Because as um, both Sister Sheila and Sister Alnora said this, and they're right on point with this, um, that um, it's not enough to stop something negative if we don't replace it with something positive. Because we'll go back to it. So being filled with the Spirit of God, we're saying no to this, but I'm saying yes to this. And so instead of lying, we should do what? Start telling the truth. You see what I'm saying? And and, the chips fall where they oh, but we tell the truth in love, man. We tell the truth in love. But and, 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 and so, we, so we we got to be proactive in this. It's not enough. And see, can you imagine saying, "I'm I'm not going to eat another donut today. I'm not going to eat another donut today. I'm not." Guess what you think about all night long? A donut. I'm not eating a donut today, but I'm going to get that salad. You see. So it's positive, and so sometimes we, 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 don't, we, we don't hit the positive end. But in Colossians, I want you to see this in Colossians. I want you to see this now. Okay, we're in Colossians. I want you to catch this now. Colossians chapter 3. And we've, we've, we've read this verse, and, and no doubt some of us have memorized it, but I want you to see a difference here. Colossians chapter 1 says, um, chapter 3, verse 1. If you then were raised with Christ, in the language, what it would really probably be better rendered since you have been raised with Christ. If this has happened, the if in this kind of context is, if and it, it points to, and it's really so, so since it's true, um, true, let's read it that way. Since we were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. What, what, what does that mean to seek? It's there, we know how to spell it. But what, what does that mean to seek? Search for. Search for that, that's part of it. But you know what? Let me, let me tell you what else it means. Earnestly covet. Covet means what? Starts with a D. Desire. desire. Covenant desire. Strive after. See, what, so what, this thing is not just passive. This is not just laid back. This says is, I am going to passionately, I am earnestly I'm designed, I'm striving after those things which are above. Amen. Amen. You see, you can't do that and still be stuck down here. Amen. Playing with mess on the ground instead of looking at heaven. But, but, then he, but he didn't stop there. Look at what else he says here. Paul writing to this church. Guess where he was when he wrote this? In a prison. Don't tell me you can't get a high view of God in prison. Talk to, talk to um, our dear sister Kim Davis. You do know we prayed and the Lord delivered her out of jail. 
Yeah, she got out of jail. But I, I got word, and Sister Myrtle um, shared this with me. I didn't know this, that um, the Sunday before they released her, she was in the jail praising God. You know, the devil doesn't like you when you praise God. She was praising God, and it got on their nerves. Yeah. It, it, it stirred up. That they, yeah. they were, now, they would have been okay if she had said, the food is bad. The bed is hard. I blankety blank blank. They would have said, yeah, 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 yeah. But she started praising God. And they said, please stop it. And she said, I can't stop praising him. And they said, I know what we're going to do. We're going to put you in solitary. And they put her in solitary. And guess what she did in solitary? Kept on praising the Lord. Next thing I know, they said, well, look, we got to get her out of here. We got to. She's influencing other people. They might start praising them too. We, look, get her out of here. I'm telling you, if you could just praise God through your mess. And they do that in Acts 16. <laughs> they began to praise the Lord in the jail. They had whipped them, put them in stock, and they, look, the earthquake came. And look, and the, and the jail, look, all the jail, look, the jailhouse opened up. And the jailer said, oh no, if they get her out, it's my job. And he was about to kill himself. And they said, no, don't kill yourself. They all right here. Then he said these words. What in the world? What must I do? To be saved. Ah, it's sometimes we can earn a hearing by the mess that we're going through. And they say, how in the world are you holding your head up through that? How in the world are you going through that? It's nothing but the goodness of Jesus. Ah, and so look, I'm about ready to preach up in here now. Y'all don't mind if I preach a little bit. I'm just, just. <laughs> but look, <laughs> but look, look, look at this. He says in verse one here. Seek those things. Go passionately. He says, he says, earnestly covet, earnestly desire, strive after those things that are above. But then he says in verse 2, set your mind on things above. That's different than this first word. This, this, word, this word, set your mind on. Dr. Um, John MacArthur has a beautiful um, note here that I want to share. L l I want you to catch this. This is so rich. He says this. This can also be translated Think or have this inner disposition as a compass point. Watch this as a compass points north. The, the believer's entire disposition should point itself toward things of heaven. Heavenly thoughts can only come by understanding heavenly realities from the scripture. I need somebody who's been coming through this truth project. What's another word for reality? God's perspective. Woo! Wait a minute. God's perspective on a matter or being, watch this, using the truth claims of God. So God's perspective on a matter, we look at everything through the lens of God. How does God see this situation? Not how do I see it? Not does what even my flesh, not even my culture. How does God see this? And he says, when, when, when we set in our mind, look, so we're seeking. These are strong verbs. We're seeking the things which are above. But, 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 but setting our mind on things that, that, that are above. And so we're setting our mind on things that are at the heart of God. Oh, that's so rich. But look at what else it says here. He says, set your mind on things above and not on things of the earth. For you died. Did you hear Sheila say that from Romans 6? You died to that. You died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, if that's the case, therefore, here's the conclusion, therefore, put to death those memory which is on the earth. Amen. Fornication, Amen. sleeping around, uncleanliness, passion, yes. evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked. When you lived in them. If we still walk in that way, watch this. Salvation. I don't care how many times you've been baptized. I don't care how many times you speak in tongues. I don't care if you have to go back and say, I got saved when I was a little girl, but I'm backslid now. Because God is always interested in where are you right now? Let me ask a, a question here, and I ask this of a dear saint. Was Demas a believer? Was Demas a believer? 
Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, I hear Sister, Sister Doris over there. Let me, let me, let me do us some, some work here. This was, this, 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 this is for free. This is, this, no charge for this. Um, but I want you to turn to Colossians chapter 4. When you get to Colossians chapter 4, then what's the last epistle of, um, that um, Paul wrote? The last one. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. You're going to say Second Timothy, right? So I want you to put your, go to Colossians chapter 4. We were in Colossians um, chapter 3. So all you have to do is go over a page probably. And you're going to get Colossians chapter 4. Okay, and then hold your finger there and then just go a few pages. You're going to get to Second Timothy. We're going to compare two. But this is going to be a, a top. This is going to be a, a character study. We just want to we want to check out this man, Demas. And then I'm going to ask the class again. Was Demas a believer? OK, that's that's the premise. And so I want to build a case. I'm not I'm going to give you my um, my answer after I hear yours. And if your answer sound better than mine, I'm going to go with yours. Is that, is that all right? Now, look, let's look at this. Then we're in Colossians 4, and I just want to read one verse, and it's verse number 14. You with me? Colossians 4, verse number 14. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. So Paul, writing to this church at Colossae, he says, listen, look, he says, in essence, and there's a list of names here, but we want to just zero on this one verse. He says, Luke, the beloved physician, he, he's with me now. And, and, and also, Demas greet you. But now let's look at 2 Timothy. Let's look at 2 Timothy. And I want us to look at chapter 4, fourth, fourth chapter, both fours. And, and I, I want to zero in on this, on, on this verse here. And, and everybody there, I want to make sure everybody's there. I want to look at verse number 10. Yeah, that's it. That's what Sister Pat, look at number 10. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. I, I, I just want to stop there. I got a question to ask. Was Demas a believer? Mm, mm. Is it possible to forsake Paul and stay with Jesus? Huh? Not in this regard. Now, now, for those who didn't get it, that was Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. And I link that with 2 Timothy 4, verse number 10. Okay? Okay? Now, now, now I, I, heard, I think it was Sister Lex said, yeah, he was a believer. But, but uh, Elijah has that body language, and he's doing like this. I, I, there seems to be a difference of opinion. Can you help us and in, in, in make your case? I, I, I'm sorry that I don't know the Bible verse, but I believe somewhere in the book of James it says that uh, God will keep those who persevere to the, those who belong to God or those who persevere to the end. Ah. Uh, so that being said, if you were, how it applies to me is that if I say as a child I grew up in church and if uh, I was saved when I was in a previous marriage, but uh, I'm no longer uh, walking with the Lord, not by my own power, but by the power that he has, uh, that lives in me through him. If I walk away from Christ, then I'm, it shows that what I, when I thought that I was a believer, I was not. Mm. I was just associated with believers. Woo! Wow! Boy, did he make a case. Can, 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 I, can I tell you that I lean to this side? Now, what I will say this is, now, now this is going to be very profound. You need to write this down. Thank you, my brother. Don't miss this. This is my, my, my assessment of the situation. I don't know. I don't know whether he was saved or not. But I can say this. If he was truly a believer, he was a shaky one. He was a poor witness. And I, I don't think we want to live like that. No, no, wait, we got, no, no, so, so if he was a believer, and only God knows his heart, but it wasn't important how he started. It's not important how we start. How you finish. Say a person was in church and he, he, he did this and he did this and he preached and, and she ushered and she did this and she did this. She got baptized. She came to the Bible study every week. Da, 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 da. 
Only God knows. But, but, but now, it's important how you finish. That's why we got to finish strong. Now, brother, I, but no, no, I want to make sure you get it. What I would say in, in Timothy. Now, now you got to hold the mic up. You what I would say up. in 2 Timothy 4.10, he was not a believer because he was a lover of this world. Mm. Woo. So that I would say that he was not a believer. Whoa. Whew. And, and, and God does say in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we should not be, and see, if we're seeking the things that are above, we're setting our mind on things above, we, we, we go, the world should not have that pull on us. You know what, the world, you know what it's saying? I got another lover. The world, adulterous, spiritually. I love the world more than you. And you know what I'm convinced God does sometimes? Take us on home. We're such an embarrassment. We love the world so much. You know what God says? Okay. You love the world that much? And so some people get, see, they say, they, they, we've misquoted this and misapplied it. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart from it. That doesn't mean you raise them in church. You, you, you take them to Awana. You, you take them to VBS. And you take them to a good news club. You have them in, in Christian school, home school. You do all that. And, and then he go out there and sow those wild oats. Live like the devil. You said, I claim that verse. There's some that go out there and never get back. That's not what that verse means. It says train them in, according to his bent. So you can't claim that as a promise, but that's a principle, but you can't claim it as a promise. And so we need to be, we need, you know what we should be doing on a daily basis, or at least when we, when, we, when we got people in our circle that is questionable, praying, are you sure you saved? Are you sure you saved and based on what? And if they start saying, I got baptized, I, 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 I've been coming to manor for 40 years. And you say, why should God allow you into heaven or me when we're not perfect? And you say, uh, well, God is a merciful God. I'm convinced, and you may differ with me, I'm convinced too many churches have people in church who just joined the church. Amen. Amen. They're religious, Amen. but, 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 but not, not, not saved. And we got to stop giving them a pass. We got to stop saying they just need to grow. Dead things can't grow. Amen. 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 And, and so and so and 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 and, and we, we can oh this this is and I, I I'm not mad at it, but you know what? I would rather for people to say, but Lord, I didn't like what you said there. Got on my nerves. The nerve of you. Who told you to say that? I would rather for you be mad at me here on on, on earth than I get in heaven looking for you ain't you ain't there. Let's close out in prayer. Lord God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Don't know where to go, but I, I, I know you've put it on my heart, Lord God, because we, not them, not they, us. Lord, we, we, we just settling for low living. And an ungodly living. And we brought the lie. Pleasure, fulfillment, and happiness above our commitment to Jesus Christ. And time, Lord, it's time that it stopped. We, we, too many of us run in and out of the church, not here for three or four months, and then come and sit right back where we were like nothing happened. Nobody says, where you been? Lord God, we need to hold each other accountable if we really love each other. And if we don't love each other, Lord, let's just stop playing church. And so, Lord God, I just thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for those who have gathered. Help us to love one another. As we, Lord God, we've been reminded in your word from the Apostle Paul. Here on out, we, we're going to set our mind on things above, not on things of this earth. We're going to seek those things which are above and not on things of this earth. And we're going to set our mind on things above. And we're going to reckon those things that are, have died, those things that are dead, dead. And not resurrect them because we want to we pour it out on our flesh. Deliver us, not them, deliver us.
from evil. And we want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Let's give him the praise. Let's give him the praise. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the praise.